there is a discussion about <clears throat> are people capable of unconditional love, <laughs> right? And I'm going to give a context of what is being said. Like, for example, they'll say, you know, um, they question whether or not a person that you're dating is, is capable of unconditional love because love always comes with conditions, meaning either why they are or are not attracted to you, whether you do or do not have a certain status or type of money, or whether or not you have a certain, um, you know, look or whatever. I guess. Yeah, I get it. You see what I'm saying? And so, but then there also is the question of like, let's say if it's a man woman dynamic, like you being a provider, and it's like, if that's not there, is, is it possible for unconditional love to be there considering those things are not there? Yeah, I now, understand. Now, there also is the question of, you know, a mother's love for a child. Yes. And that being a, a, a clear definition, but, but I'm going to kind of ask that question about both of these sides. Yeah. In other words, is it, I mean, it's one thing for a mother to love a child. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right? Well, not yet when you say, you see what I'm saying. I know what that is. Being a, but, a, but, but, but what I'm asking is, should adults be looking for at all? Should they drop that concept altogether? Of like unconditional love? Inside a relationship, <clears throat> not for humanity, not for God, because, you know, in my mind, those things are, um, the reciprocity is with the universe and not with a person. You see what I'm saying? And so there's a different sort of dynamic. If you say, I'm just going to do give this gift to a person who's poor, or I'm just going to do charity, you know, versus with a, with a human being. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you understand? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So what about it? You ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Is it rolling? We rolling. We rolling okay. So here, look. So once again, let me start by saying that people are confused about what love is. So when they start talking about unconditional love, all right. So I'm saying, well, first of all, if you're confused about love, that's where you might start getting involved in the concept of unconditional love. Like, because right away, here we go, we're going to try to create different types of love, conditioned versus unconditioned. And I'm going to argue that love is neither conditional nor unconditional. That love simply is the intent to create the highest good, period. Regardless, that's the intent, see? So we could say, um, probably the purest expression of that is a parent's orientation towards a child, where the parent realizes that the child is, in fact, first of all, their responsibility to protect, to care for, and to assist in their elevation so that they know the child is an independent, sovereign being in reality. First of all, they understand that, right? And then their work is to do their best to try to be helpful. That's, everything else is couched in that awareness, right? So if we would take that position, say with a lover or a friend or a stranger, then that's the unconditional love. You see? So that if there is actually love, then there is already unconditional love. There's no unconditional love, but then not unconditional. No, that's craziness. No. Is it the love, presence of love or not? Yeah, it's love or not. You know, it's sort of like conditional left turn versus conditional left turn, unconditional left turn. What? No, it's the act of turning left is what a left turn is. It doesn't matter what the conditions are. See? So I think that's where the beginning of this problem is. Now, the next part of it is if not, then what are we talking about? And most of the time we're talking about attachment and we're talking about expectations and we're talking about meeting our needs versus meeting another person's needs, you see. And so now again, all of that is relevant and it's worth paying attention to, but don't confuse it with love. Love doesn't have anything to do with that, right? As human beings, we have certain needs, and then we have to figure out how do we meet those needs. So, for example, the need to socialize and to be connected, that's a human need. It doesn't have anything to do with love. It can contribute to love as far as acts, but 
those needs are needs about being a human being, you see. So we may look for different ways to be attached. We may look for different ways to have companionship. We may look for a road to enter with a partner. When we talk about um, likes and dislikes, when we talk about goals and objectives, when we talk about even morality, we're talking about how do we get on the same highway so that we can roll along with a certain person, right? And those are the conditions that we are placing on ourselves. I will roll with a person on the highway in this way. And those are conditions, that's because of what? The way we love our lives, right? Ourselves, right? It has nothing to do with the other person. I'm not making these conditions. I'm willing to roll in this way. Right? If the person is not willing to roll in this way, can I accept, can I respect, and even can I support that person rolling in the way that they want to roll? Or am I going to fight with them and insist that they roll my way? See, that's really what we're talking about. And I think that a lot of this conditioned and unconditioned type talk comes from being... Uh, sort of uh, subtly managed mentally by the society, sure. by the ownership culture that we're in. See, if I know that the person is an independent sovereign being, then I'm not caught up with they got to act a certain way, be a certain way, because I don't own them or their space or their lives. Right? But here's the thing. People don't know this, that really behind all that is I own them. They are mine. And I want their mindness to look like I want it to look. And then when it doesn't look like the way I want it to look, or I feel like I'm losing my grip on the mindness, now I start getting scared and acting a fool. And now we start talking about conditions and all of this and all of that. But really you're talking about your own insecurity. There's no reason to impose any conditions except people as they are. If they are rolling on the highway, the same highway that you're on, and it makes sense, well, we can roll together because we have very similar, you know, expectations, we have similar morality, we have similar uh, directions we're going in, etc. We could be cool. We can meet our need for attachment, synergy, companionship. Like those are needs of a human. And then do it love. But those are needs of a human. Okay. If we can do that, then it makes sense. It's wise for me to roll with this person. But if they decide, I remember when I was very young, I heard uh, one of my uh, mentors at the time in drug treatment. I knew that he and his wife were in the same program, right? They were both ex-drug addicts. And they weren't spending any time together. And in fact, uh, they were using their prior uh, maiden names while they were in the program. Because one of the rules we had in the program is that you couldn't be involved in a relationship while you're in the program, right? And so I remember the mentor saying at one point, well, somebody asked about that, you know, how do you do that? And he said, well, we figured once we finish our programs, We'll reevaluate our needs and our relationship and we'll decide do we still want to roll together or do we need to go separate ways? And he said, if you love a person and they need to go in a separate way, then you should support them. And he said, I love her enough that I'm willing to let her walk away and live the life she needs to live. And I think that's the type of unconditional space that comes out of real love. You don't have to create it. You don't have to think about it. It's already present because love is about the highest interest. It's not about what you want, what you need, what you're trying to dream up and all of that. Those are things that are there, but that has nothing to do with love. Those are your conditions. Life's got some other conditions. And sometimes life's conditions will collide with your particular conditions. And that's when you will have your problem because you won't want to go along with life. You want life to bend the way you want it to. Oftentimes it won't.